Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is go over a couple examples of how to simplify rational expressions, not only by using the rules of exponents, such as the product rule, the quotient rule, but now using the power to product rule, as well as the power to quotient rule. And if you remember from the rules of exponents in the video that I have, whenever you have, um, whenever you have a product raised to a power, that product um, get that power gets distributed to both of your products. Then we can apply the rules, uh, the other rules of exponents. So the first thing we do when we're simplifying rational expression is we want to kind of get rid of the parentheses. So we're going to apply the power, uh, the power to product rule by distributing the two to um, our product of x and y. So in this case, I'll now have x squared over y squared divided by 3x. And now you can see that. The only thing I can simplify by using my rules of exponents is the division of x squared over x. So I'm going to use the quotient property of the rules of exponents to say that is now going to be y squared of x squared minus 1 divided by 3. Right? So when I do this, I'm going to subtract 2 minus 1. And that's going to be in the numerator. Um, and 2 minus 1 is just going to be x to the first, which will just be x. So my final answer will be y squared x divided by 3. Okay. Um, in the next example, now I have, I'm going to apply the power to product rule. But now you can see that my p product inside the parentheses now has, p as, um, as da, 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 has powers, right? So in doing that, now I have to use the, also the power rule of the rules of exponents. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to distribute this 2 to every single one, just like I did over here. So in doing that, I now have 2 squared, x squared squared, and y cubed squared all over. 4x to the seventh y. So it's very important when applying the power to product rule that you distribute that power to every single term that's multiplying inside those parentheses. Then, whenever you have a power raised to another power, I'm sorry, an exponent raised to another power, we have to make sure that we remind ourselves that we're going to multiply these. Well, 2 squared I can just evaluate, which is going to be 4. x 2 times 2 is going to be x to the fourth. And here it's going to be y to the 3 times 2, which is 6 divided by 4, x to the seventh, y. Now I can apply my quotient properties. Well, 4 divided by 4, by using the division property, you can see that 4 divides into 4 one time. So that really reduces to 1 over 1, which we're just not going to write anymore. We don't need to. Over here, I have x to the 4 minus 7. And here I have y to the 6 minus 1. Now remember, that's going to give me x to the negative third and y to the fifth. And remember to rewrite this expression with a um, positive exponent, I am now going to write this as y to the fifth over x cubed. As I'm going to write, as I'm going to make sure that I um, write in, da, da, da. as I'm going to make sure that I write in my negative exponent as a reciprocal, so it's going to be in the denominator. Um, over here, I have a negative exponent. Now, there's a couple different ways we can go ahead and go about this. Um, when we have a negative exponent, we could automatically um, go ahead and rewrite this as a positive power, um, which I am exactly going to do. And actually, I'll do the other problem in two different ways. So the first thing that we can do is if I was going to rewrite this as a positive power, then therefore I'm going to rewrite this expression as 3 over, because I, I don't like dealing with negative exponents if I don't have to. So I'm going to rewrite this as a negative power. To do that, I'll have 3 up top, and then I'll have x squared to the positive third times 3xy squared. Right? So to make this positive, I'm going to put in the denominator. Now I can use the power rule and the um, power to product rule. So therefore, I have 3 over x to the 2 times 3 is x to the 6. Here, I'm going to distribute this square to 3x and y. So I have, I'll have 9x squared y squared. Now we see that I can simplify. 3 over 9 can be reduced by dividing 3 on top and bottom to a 1 third. I can use the product rule to multiply x to the 6 times x squared by adding the exponents. And then y squared is just going to be there. So I'll have 1 over 3 x to the 8th y squared. Now in this last example, there's a couple different ways we can do this. Um, and I'm going to do it two different ways because I wanted to do another example, but I didn't want to make the video overly too, too long. The first example is. You know, the power to product rule states when you have a product raised to a power, you distribute that power to every single term inside of it. That is exactly the same for the quotient. When you have a quotient, a division problem, raised to a power, you, d you distribute that um, power to the numerator and to the denominator. And in this case, you can see that I have, um, 
in this case, you can see that I have uh, a product in the numerator and the product in the denominator. So really, everything's going to be raised to this negative second power. Okay. Then I can go ahead and simplify it by using my power rule. Um, and over here, since these are negative, so to make them positive, I'm going to rewrite them in the other, other way. So really, I have 6 squared over x to the negative fourth over um, 3 squared, 3 squared over x to the negative sixth. Now, to simplify these, um, again, oh. Yeah, uh, I guess I could have simplified those first, right? The x squared over the x cubed. And I could have simplified the 1 third. Oh, I didn't really pick a good problem, did I? Dang. Eh, well. Well, the power of quotient rule, which I was trying to show you, was distributing all of these um, into that form would work. Dang. You know what? Let's do a different problem. Let's do. 3 fifths x squared over y. Sorry about that. Um, if we were going to do this, we could do, again, my two different ways. I could distribute this, so I'd have 3 squared x squared to the negative second over 5 to the negative second and y to the negative second. Now, I could use my power rule, but again, to make everything positive, I'm going to re, I'm going to have to flip them. So therefore, this would be 5 squared over 3 squared. Here, this is going to have to be y squared, and this would be x squared squared. Now, you can see now everything has a positive exponent. Now, what I can do is evaluate. So I'd have 25 over y squared all over 9 over x to the fourth. Okay? The other way to do this is to simply to get this to be positive beforehand. So if I was going to do this, I would have to rewrite this as a reciprocal. Well, since we have, um, since it's already a fraction, to rewrite a fraction as a reciprocal, we just flip the numerator and the denominator. So therefore, I can do this exact same problem just by flipping the numerator and denominator. And when I do that, I can now make my power positive. Then I would again use the power to product and power to quotient rule to distribute the two. And you guys would see that I would get the exact same answer over there. Thanks.